Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, let's continue with our physics engine and just a reminder if you want the source code for either the flat library or the physics library you can download that uh, from github. I have the links in the description. Um, also videos for how the flat library was created are freely available on my channel. Uh, let's talk about last time we got to this point where we have now circle collision detection and resolution and just basic resolution where we're just um, kind of bouncing off each other pushing each other apart. And now I want to start getting the flat body ready to simulate boxes or rectangles. And in order to do that, I need to have vertices for the box. And I also need to be able to transform the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a transformation structure. So let's add a new item to our physics library. I'm going to call this the uh, transform or flat transform. And I'm going to make this a read-only struct. I want to avoid allocations with this when possible, so we'll just make it a structure. And it's going to be very simple. We're going to store the position, so I'll write that in here. And then I want to store the sine and the cosine. Now this differs from so the transforms because I'm not going to have a scale. And let me just write in the constructor here real quick. And we're going to pre-compute the sine and cosine and store it here. And then I want to make one overloaded uh, version of the constructor that just takes a uh, floating point x and y for the coordinate instead of a, a flat vector. So let's put another one in here and we'll just put an x and a y for the input. And then I want to make a, um, a read-only static version of the flat transform that just gives me a zero transform. So, so I can just grab the zero transform really quickly as a static function or a static uh, field. I'm just going to call that zero and we'll just provide all zeros for that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the flat transform. Let's go ahead and talk about actually transforming things. So inside the vector class, or I'm sorry, the vector struct, let's make a static function that will allow us to transform vertices. So this is going to return a flat vector and I'm going to call this transform. We're going to pass in the vector we want to transform. And then we'll just pass in the actual transform struct. Inside, first we want to rotate. So you always want to do transforms in this order. You want to do the rotation first, and then you want to do the position or translation. So let's do the rotation. Um, actually, I don't have that memorized, so I'm just going to put Rx and Ry here. And then we'll do the uh, translation. So after we rotate, we're going to get Rx and Ry. And so then the translation is going to be whatever Rx is plus the uh, position translation, and then the same thing for the y. And let's go figure out what the uh, rotation formula is. So let's just type in the 2D rotation formula, and this first one should work. So I'm just going to copy this, bring it back into my code, because I don't have to memorize it. Okay, and I'm just going to fill in these fields down here. All right, there's the X, let's do the Y. And I didn't copy a piece of that, but right there it's the cosine times the uh, initial Y. And let's just go verify that. Yeah, I missed that copy there, but we just put the Y in right there, it'll be fine. All right, so we have the ability to transform now. Um, oh, and I actually need to return my results. So let's return, this will be a new vector, and it's gonna be TX and TY. All right, so now I actually want to clean this up just a little bit, make the code a little bit more, uh, a little bit more compact. Instead of calculating rotation and then calculating translation and then turning it in over here, let's just take these out, the TX and TY from our result. And I'm just going to move this right into the X and Y component over here. And then we'll move this one over as well. Uh, let me give them their own lines so they're easier to read. And so this will do the rotation. And then I need to add in the translation as well. So I'm just going to tack that in on the end right there. And right there. And then I can get rid of all this code up here. Now let's start working on getting the flat body ready to do uh, rectangles and boxes. So I need some more information here. I want to store, and I'm gonna make this a read only, but I want to store a flat vector that has the uh, vertices. And instead of public, actually I'm gonna make this private. And these are gonna be the untransformed vertices. So basically the vertices that are around the origin and we can make that really quick. It, now, if this is a circle body, this is just going to be null because it's not going to use the vertices. 
But if it ends up being a box body or later on a polygon body, it's going to actually store the vertices here. So let's scroll down to the constructor. If the uh, shape type is, uh, let's check for a box. Then I want to set the vertices here. Um, otherwise, we'll just ensure that the vertices are null. And I'm going to make a function to calculate the vertices. So this is going to return a flat vector array of vertices. I'm going to call this uh, create box vertices. And let's just pass in the width and the height. And I want this to be a static function as well. And so um, now I'm just going to calculate the extents of the box. So I'm going to get the left, the left, the right, the top and the bottom. Okay, so I have the extents, and so now I can create the vertices. So let's make an array of uh, vertices we can return. Uh, boxes have four vertices. Um, so all of the polygons I create, including boxes, they're going to have vertices in clockwise winding order. And I'm going to start at the top left. So let's make a new vertex. Uh, so it'll be left and top. And I'm just going to copy this. Okay, so we started on the left and top. Now we're going to go to the right and top. Let's go to the then right and the bottom, and then we'll go to the left and the bottom. And now that we have the box, we can return those vertices. Let's just assign what we get from this function. Okay, and um, actually I made a mistake here. These uh, The width and the height should be floating point values. Okay, and I'll take care of that. Okay, so now we have the vertices. Um, next, I need to store the transformed vertices. So I'm going to make a private um, flat vector, and I'm going to call these the transformed vertices. Okay, and the transformed vertices is basically where I'm going to store the vertices after they've been transformed. Okay, so that way I can use the transformed vertices multiple times without having to retransform them. It's, it's kind of like I'm uh, caching the results of the transformations and then using it over and over. Hopefully that's what it ends up being. And then I need a Boolean actually to tell me if uh, the vertices, the transform vertices need to be updated. So let's make a Boolean, um, I'm going to call this transform update required. So if we do need to update the vertices, this is going to be set to true. If not, it's going to be set to false, and then we can just use whatever's in here. And down here, let's go ahead and set the transform vertices. They're not actually going to have anything in it, but I can actually allocate the memory for it. So that'll just be a new array of vertices. And it's going to be the same size as the vertices. And then otherwise, the trans if, it's a if it's not a box body, then the uh, transform vertices will be null, just like the vertices. And then let's uh, set the update required to false. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I do know when I'm actually drawing these shapes, I'm going to have to store the um, the indices for the triangles because I want to be able to fill them in with uh, like a filled shape when I'm drawing it. I'm going to make one more thing up here. And this is going to be an energy array that uh, stores the indices of the triangles for the box body or the box uh, vertices. Uh, let's just call this triangles. If it's a circle shape, the triangles will be null. Otherwise, let's go ahead and set the triangles. And let's make another function to do that as well. So triangulating a box is super trivial. We're going to return an integer array that is the uh, triangle integer or the triangle indices into the vertices. I'm going to call this triangulate box. And then let's just pass in the vertices for the box. So box vertices. I don't think we need to pass anything in there. Um, actually, we don't need to pass anything in there at all. I think I can just create box triangles. Because all the uh, triangling a box is always the same as far as when you're trying to get the indices, it's always the same. So I think what we can do is just create an array. They'll call this triangles. And there are always going to be six of them. Okay, so let me set those real quick. And then I can just return the, uh, the value. Okay, so let's go and set these values. And then the way it works, um, we want to start at the top left. And then we go to the top right, which is index number one, and then the bottom right, which is index number two. Then we'll start at the top left again, then we'll go to index number two, which is the bottom right, and then index number three, which is the bottom left. That will be everything we need for triangulating our box. So we can just return that over here. In our constructor, we'll just call the uh, create uh, the box triangles.
Okay, perfect. I think I think we now have everything we need. The only thing is um, I need to set the transform update required. So in the constructor, I set it to false, but anytime we change the rotation or the position, I need to set it to true. So if I scroll down here, I've got these move functions. Let's set that value to uh, true because we're changing positions. So we need to update the transform. I'll set that to true right there. And then I also want a function that will allow me to rotate. So um, rotate the box. So let's do rotate. Um, it will pass in an amount we want to rotate, and it'll simply just take the rotation and increment it by the amount. And then the required uh, update transform required is true. And then finally, I think I need one more function. I want to be able to now uh, get these transform vertices. So I'm going to make a function. Let's see, let's go down here. Okay, this would be get the transform vertices. And what it's going to do is simply return the transformed vertices. But it's actually got to do one thing before that. Uh, what it's going to do is going to check to see if we need to update the array of transform vertices because something's moved, or maybe it hasn't even been um, set at all. Um, so if the update required, then let's go ahead and create the flat transform. We'll pass in the position and the rotation. And then we're just going to loop through all of the vertices and um, transform them and put them into the transform vertices list. Okay, inside the uh, flat vector class, we have the transform. We're just going to pass in the vector we want to transform and then the transform we're going to use. I think that's everything we need for that. The only thing I want to look at is actually my flat transform. Instead of making it public, I want this to be internal to the, to the physics engine. I don't think I need to pass this out at all. I think I just want it to exist here inside the engine and not outside of that. And then same thing in the vector class. Um, so I made this an internal struct. And so this function for transforming has to be internal as well. And then if I go back to the body, um, I can get the transform vertices and everything looks great. Um, the only other thing is I want to allow access to the triangles. So I'm going to gonna make this a public read-only array. And let's just change that to a capital T at triangles for everything. And then we'll change this to public. And from there, I think we can go to our game class and let's test it out. So let's go down to the initialization code. We made everything a circle before, and instead I'm going to make everything a uh, box. Okay, uh, now everything's going to come out as a box. Let's increase the size. I'm going to make these two meters by two meters. Um, now I actually want to get rid of the collision code because we're not actually going to do collisions because these are not circles anymore. And we'll have to rewrite that code to handle boxes and circles. So let's go ahead and just uh, get rid of that for now. So I'm going to say if uh, false to get rid of this code. I do want to loop through all of the bodies. And I'm actually going to rotate all the bodies. So let's uh, get the body. And then I want to rotate it. And the amount I'm going to rotate, um, let's just do, let's have it rotate pi divided by 2. So that'll be 90 degrees, uh, pi divided by 2 for every second. And so we'll bring in the, the elapsed time in seconds. And all we're doing, so if you haven't seen the previous video, this function, all it does is it gets the amount of seconds that have elapsed since the previous frame. And so um, when I multiply this value by the elapsed time in seconds, I'm making it happen on a per second basis. So it's going to go, it's going to rotate 90 degrees or math pi over 2 every second. Okay, so we're rotating the bodies, and now all I have to do is draw the bodies. And to, I have to change this to use a different function. So we're going to draw a filled or polygon fill. There we go. It needs the vertices, it needs the triangles and the color. Okay, so actually the vertices are going to be kind of a problem right now because if you look at it, it wants the uh, mono game version of vector 2. And we have everything in flat vector right now. We need to convert the array from a flat vector to a vector 2. And we have this uh, function or this class we created called the flat converter. I'm just going to make a function in here that'll do that for us. So let's, uh, we're going to return a vector to array, and I'm going to call this two uh, vector, let's call it vector two array, two vector two array. So we're going to pass in the flat vector array, I'm going to call that the source array. And then I'm going to pass in a reference. Oh, and actually, I don't want to do any allocations here. 
or I don't want to do allocations every frame. So this is going to return void. I'm not going to have an re actual return value, but I'm going to pass in a reference to another array that has, let's say, vector2 array, and that'll be the destination. Okay, and this way I won't have to do a lot of all allocations. I should be able to allocate this one time and then just pass in the reference and use it over and over. And so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to check the uh, destination reference to make sure it's um, it's not null. So if it is null, or if the um, source length does not equal the destination uh, length, then I need to reallocate the destination to match the source. So let's just tell it that we want the destination to be a new array of vectors, and I want it to be the same length as the source. Again, this should not happen very often because I'm just using boxes, and so it's just going to be four vertices. And once it allocates at one time, it shouldn't have to do that again. Now, once we start getting into polygons, where we have different sized polygons with different vertices, we might have to revisit this function because then it, it might do a lot of allocations depending on the array. And maybe we'll just make one big array, like a, a pool of vertices that can just store as many vertices as we want and just return the count. And then I wonder if we can use a span to just get a slice of a of the array we want. Well, that's something when we start actually using polygons, we can think about that. Uh, for our boxes, this will work perfectly. And now we just need to copy all the information over. So I'm going to loop through all of the vertices in the source. And let's just copy them over to the destination. OK, that's all there is to it. Nice and easy. Back in our game class, we can start drawing now. Um, let's go ahead and use the flat converter and we'll go to the array. Um, so the body has vertices that we can, we want to get the transform vertices and then we want to pass them into an array. Now the array we haven't created yet. So I'm going to create an array here at the top, um, inside of our game class. Um, let's make this a vector two. I'm going to call this uh, vertex buffer. Uh, that'll be fine. So then back in our draw code, we can pass in a reference to the uh, vertex buffer. And then when we go to draw the polygon, it wants the uh, vertex or it wants the vertex array in uh, vector two, and that's our vertex buffer. Uh, the triangles are inside the body class, so we can get the triangles there. And then the color, let's use the colors that we created earlier, the colors array. And now I want to do the same thing, but I want to draw the outline. So uh, we'll use draw polygon. Let's pass in the uh, vertex buffer. And then simply the color for the outline is always going to be white. Okay, so now if I did this right, let's see, we should be rotating all of the, so all of the bodies are boxes. We should be rotating all of the boxes now and then drawing all of the boxes at their transformed position. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's just see what happens here. Perfect. That looks good. Um, interesting. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, the next thing I would like to work on is actual collision detection. So I think that's what the next video is going to be about. But for now, we have all of the information we need to get started with uh, actual collision detection um, using boxes. Uh, so if the flat body is a box shape, we can now, uh, we can now do collision detection.